I know that you have such an incredible connection with your fans and and to say they're devoted is a massive understatement I think I would say maybe rabid is is a more accurate word what what is it do you think that makes them so loyal and and so there for you year after year after year I think without sounding pretentious seeing this, because it can be pretentious, it, it, it can be a, a weird question like, uh, why do you think they love you so much? Well, because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> why wouldn't they? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it can be weird to answer that. <laughs> I think I was fortunate enough through my whole life to have received wonderful songs. Yes, it's important. Because once everything is done and said, at the end of the day, it's about songs, and I say it on stage. I have decided a long time ago that I wanted to be an open book. It's been against me pretty much at the beginning of my career that I've talked too much. I shouldn't be that personal. Uh, you should I, have an air I, of mystery, perhaps. Yeah, you know, like you should keep your private life private. But then helicopters fly about your house and they take pictures of you in your pool. So I'm like, I better talk about that. You know? <laughs> so it's like, at the end of the day, that open book has been a positive thing for me. What is the most moving experience, Celine, you've had with a fan? There's many. It's like, which song do you prefer? What is your... It's, it's too difficult to say just one thing. But the, today, now, in this studio, the first thing that pops, it's not necessarily um, a happy one, but it's reality. Not everything is fun. Not everything is positive. But it's part of everybody's life. And I have helped say goodbye to a lot of people. When the parents called me and say, my daughter or my son's last wish is to talk to you. Would you please, for that mom or dad to ask me, to trust me, to kind of hold the hand in a distance to their most precious thing, it's more than a trust. It's more than a song. And um, they call me not too long after, most of the time, and say, thank you, she, she's gone. It's hard, and I've met a lot of sick people behind, before my shows. I wish I could meet a lot more people. I don't, um, because I would have no time to sing. Um, <laughs> but I meet a lot of people, be people before my show, then terminal phases. And uh, I do my best. Selfishly, I, I take it. I take it. It makes me very strong, and that's why I'm not scared. I'm not scared to lose my voice because I won't lose my strength. Wow, that's pretty, pretty extraordinary. Let's talk about your family. I can't imagine what it was like being one of 14 kids, by the way. Your poor mom, bless her heart. <laughs> wow, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. I, I, how did she do that? I don't know how she did it, but I'm very fortunate that we spent a lot of time together and she is with my kids and for me every day when I look and I see her and the twins with her and I, I'm saying to myself, you don't know kids how fortunate you are, but I do know. My parents, we never had money and I, we never felt like we never had money. That is right there is brilliant and everything that we were, she did it, obviously was passed on to the other one. So can you imagine how I looked? <laughs> <laughs> hand me down, hand me down, hand me down 14 times. Yeah, so why do you think I like clothing and shoes and jewelry? <laughs> that explains <Hit> it. <laughs> exactly, wow, I don't know how she did it, but, but we, you know what? We never had money, but we were never poor. I think they gave us the essentials. The love, the affection, the attention. Music was part of the whole family. And if you talk to her, she doesn't think she's strong. She thinks that this is what needs to be done and you need to figure it out and that's about it. Or you die. 
<laughs> wait, wait, really? It's so, it's minus 40 degrees, what do you do? Keep putting wood in that stove and keep the kids together. Um, they did both an amazing job. We're all very, all the whole family is very healthy. And very close still. You're very, very close. Yeah. When you were little, Celine, I know that they used to put you on the kitchen table and have you sing Janis Joplin, right? Yeah. Whatever songs that my family was singing, I was just singing, but they were my first audience. And you know, it's pretty fascinating because people thought that through my life, I started at the bottom and I just went up step by step and right now it's like I'm at, on top of my gig or something like that. And for me, it's totally the opposite. I really, and I still feel this way, that I started my life, my head in the clouds, dreaming about it. I mean, an international career and singing with Michael Jackson and singing in English as well because I was not speaking English at all. And, and I really f feel today that it's the opposite. I started right there dreaming about everything and coming down the steps one at a time with people reassuring me that, you know, whatever you see out there, whatever you hear, this is not reality. Show business is wonderful. We have a good time, and when it's over, it, the adrenaline is so high, it's like a drug. You have to be able, you surround yourself with the right people, and that's why I think those people who are my mom and dad, my sisters and brothers, Renee, and the people he has chosen through the years, they took me off this ladder, they gave me a helping hand to bring me back down and say, Celine, what you saw and what you did was wonderful. Good job. Now let's go home. <laughs> We're not partying. Everybody's going to say yes to everything you want. And that's what happens. You lose yourself. Is that what you think happens to so many celebrities? Yes. Who yes. just... It's unfortunate. I never wanted to be part of show business. I want to do my job because I love what I do very much, but I don't want to be part of it. When I go to bed at night, I'm honest, I'm sorry to say, it might take me a few hours to not hear their applause anymore, not see what happened that night before the show or after or during. But when I come home, there's something that takes over the, um, that powerful thing, the laughs of my children, the love of my husband, the messages from my best friends and my family. You have to have that here. And you wonder what happened. Did they have, you have to have a foundation. That's, what I, that's, that's the main thing. Are there ever times though in your show that you think, oh my God, I can't believe I have to sing yes, my, yes, <laughs> that that's for song sure. again. Yeah, no, for sure. No. <laughs> 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 yes. Many times, just before the curtain opens or the song starts, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> and then it starts, and then either they go, <sighs> <laughs> or they're like this. <gasps> or I'm from, I'm from here. Or it's my birthday. Or whatever they say, they, I'm trying. I'm trying to sing to not fall and to read. I'm from Oklahoma or something. I'm like, it's my birthday. I'm 45 years old too. I'm like, me too. I have twins. I'm like, oh, <laughs> something. I don't know. So and, and don't fall into the pit, you know. Um, they make you forget, and I thank you for it because honestly, they make you forget that you've been singing it for so long so many times and just before it starts you don't want to sing it and because of their reaction and then you look at them and you say did they lose someone and that someone was their favorite song did they just got married and they use my song they know my story i don't know theirs and that's why i keep doing it let's talk about being in las vegas this is your 10th year. Can you believe it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can't. 
And you came, you started in 2003, I know here, Celine, and initially people were pretty skeptical. Oh, about yes. It was a Cirque du Soleil and Celine Dion in Las Vegas, and oh, what is that? And the Titanic is going to sink again. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but honestly, in life, if you don't take chances, you'll never know. You can't just ask the opinion of everybody because you'll go nowhere. First, you have to believe. I don't trust everybody and I don't listen to everybody. I have my husband who's my manager, as you all know, and he chooses the team. He's got visions. They have visions. If I start to have visions and hallucination and nightmares <laughs> and I don't say, I have no time for visions. Listen, I deal with my kids and when I close my eyes and there's no vision, it's not a mirage. I'm sleeping. <laughs> okay. So we went for it. And then if you close after six months, three months, two days, an hour, a second, you close. <laughs> Just too bad, but we all decide that we were going to go for it, so. And uh, here you are, 10 years and then, later. I think originally it was supposed to be signed for two years. Somebody kind of like didn't count very well <laughs> <laughs> because they added a year. And at the end of the day, I was there for five years. So I don't know who does the math here. Not me. So it was an amazing experience. Um, people from everywhere, artists from all over the world that you all know so well, came to see the show. They were like, they didn't, they didn't sing yet. You know, <laughs> they're still happening. They started to be curious. How do you do it? How is it possible? How come? What? Michael Jackson came. I was for me was like, I just couldn't believe it. Michael Jackson came to see the show out. <laughs> I was very, 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 very proud. Did uh, you talk? Did he come backstage afterwards? Yes. And what was that like? It's amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> he was amazing. He was getting ready with the show and all that, and working on it. And you all know, and you probably all saw the movie. And Unfortunately, that's the last piece of him that we saw. And I think most of us thought that he was very sick and weak and all that. And when I saw the movie, I was shocked and very disappointed that he was gone because I, I thought he was more than sharp. He was top shape. And I was like, that is very, very sad. But anyway, um, so after five years, here I am where it's, it's, it's over. It was an amazing experience. Then if it was not enough, we decided to go on a world tour right after that. <laughs> <laughs> what are we trying to do, you know? So we went on a world tour with, the, with RC, Renee Charles, our son. Then we took a year and a half, maybe a little more than that. Just time to have the twins. And then they wanted us back. I really thought that they've had me, you know, like they wanted me for two. They had five of me, five years. Enough is enough, you know? And they wanted us again. I loved my experience here. It gave me a lot of positive things to offer my fans and to offer my family. And um, we decided to come back. And you really love living here, don't you? I do because I still enjoy very much what I do as an entertainer. Because I don't have to do it, so I would not do it. Um, I probably like so far this show the best. Before the curtains open, I always say, this one's for you guys. I have three boys at the house and they're waiting for me. I can't wait to go back home at the same time. And um, stability on top of a, one of the greatest kick as a, as a performer is wonderful. You also get to wear the most incredible gowns. And yeah. I know you are a slave to fashion. You've admitted that. And you love clothes. <laughs> You love pose, 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 pose. <laughs> and you love jewelry, obviously. By the way, I mean, seriously? <laughs> Gold finger! <laughs> well, I do, and, and I, I don't know a woman who doesn't really like... I mean, some women are easy to please and satisfied with a little bit, probably. <laughs> no, huh? okay, these are my real fans. <laughs> I can tell you right now, they're like, mm -mm. Uh, But I, I do love to shop and I do love to wear beautiful things. And, and which woman does not? 
You also love shoes. I mean, I thought I thought I was a shoe freak, but you're in a whole different category. You have 3,000 pairs of shoes. I stopped Is that counting true? because I'm not good with math. I told you before. Yeah. <laughs> but three th about? Least. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's the thing with me. You go to the store, and I'm like, I really want those ones. And they're like, what size? And I'm like, oh, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I want them. So what size do you have? <laughs> I'll make it work, baby. I'll make it work. From okay. 5 to 10, it works. <laughs> sometimes like this, sometimes like that. It doesn't matter. You want something funny? What? One of my son, Nelson, is two and a half. And he walks better in heels than me. <laughs> I don't know how he does it, but uh, I'm not the only one in the family who loves shoes, believe me. <laughs> and they, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. First of all, how are the boys doing? The boys are doing fantastic. The, the twins, it's such a joy to see them run all over the place. But for me, what's great is uh, our other son, R.C. He just turned 12, and now we do all sorts of things together. He's like an athlete. He plays baseball, basketball. I also heard, Renee, that you taught him how to play poker. <laughs> <laughs> is this true? We do play poker together. For yeah. fun, not for real money. Of course. <laughs> That's good. Thank you for precising. <laughs> I'm saying we live in Las Vegas. The kid has to learn everything about. The no, but listen. No, they're, they're, what, you, what you're trying to say right now, if I'm if I'm not wrong, is that if he's got to do it, you better do it right. <laughs> you better learn from the professional. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And. I think you're not bad, honey. No, we're having so much fun together. Yeah, that's the main thing. a lot of things. That's so nice. And it's, it's a close relationship. You went through IVF six times to have the twins. And right. I know you went through once for, for RC. RC. Mm -hmm. But you, you've been very open about it, Celine. And I'm just curious, why did you want to, to share that with people? Why did you think that was important? I really thought that there were so many women feeling that there was no hope. Uh, so many women who didn't know what to do. Maybe a lot of women didn't know that that could be done or it was okay to do. A lot of people maybe think that it's going against nature. Am I going to push nature so much to that level? Is that right? Um, and I also want, it, it made me feel good to know that it's not because our life ex, it's ex, is extraordinary. We're normal people as well. We have our struggle. We wanted a child, and it made me feel even more normal to tell them that it's been very difficult for us to have a child. And we went for help. We have decided that that was okay because technology is there, and there's nothing wrong to have the help. Would you like to have more kids? Oh my God, if you talk to me, I'd love to have 14. <laughs> But every day, the song that I hear Maybe is Hickory is Dickory Dock. to a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, you went up the clock. The clock strike 45. <laughs> Mommy came down. Hickory Dickory Dock. <laughs> oh, we'll keep you posted if it happens. <laughs> That's a long shot. Do you ever worry, Renee? I mean, you are older than Celine by 26 years. And I know that when I had my kids, I always thought, okay, well, when Ellie graduates from college, I'll be 56. And do you ever think about that? And do you ever worry about it? Not at this point. It wouldn't give me anything to worry. I'm very good with numbers, but I, I, I don't Unlike even... Unlike your wife. <laughs> no, and, and I don't even want to think about that yeah. because I won't be there when the little kids go to college. Oh, you'll be there because I represent both of us. What I'm trying, and, and if I may join that, is to make the best of each day. Because if you think of tomorrow, maybe I'm the one who's going to go first. We don't know. Nobody knows that. And whatever happens, happens. And I will always represent you as mom and dad. <laughs> I 
I That's know. a new job that I gave myself lately. <laughs> I'm such a pusher. <laughs> In 1999, I know you guys had a terrible, terrible scare because, Renee, you were diagnosed with throat cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that must have been, I know a little bit about this, and it must have been such a scary time for you both. Yes. Luckily, you know, I, I went through all the treatments, the operation, the chemo, the radiation. With Celine by my side being there for every treatment, but also it gave her uh, a maturity where she sort of took over everything, her career. She became the boss. For me, it was like for the first time of my life, he needs me. Because for all the years before, I needed him. I counted on him, I didn't question him, I did my job as well as I could, deliver my songs as well as I could, and that was it. Then, that day, everything changed, and I felt that my husband needs me. It struck me so hard. It gave me so much strength. I was like, if I can just pay back can give him back everything he's done for me. It's today. And I grew so much since then. So nobody wants to be sick. But if it needs to be positive at the end of every journey, there's something positive about it that grew between the both of us. And I think I became his wife that day, a mother, a woman. I, f I became very strong. I know that you met Celine, Renee, when she was, what, 12 or 13 years old? Yeah. And 12. 12 years old. Wow. And you mortgaged your home to finance her first yeah. record. Yeah. What was it in her that you saw as just a 12-year-old girl? Well, first I received a tape that I didn't listen to because it was, she was 12. And then a few weeks later, her brother called me and said, we're sure you didn't listen to the tape because you would have called. And I said, you're right, I'm going to listen to it. So anyway, I listened to it. I called back right away. I couldn't believe this voice, this feeling coming from a 12-year-old. And I wanted to hear it live. So she came with her mom, and she started singing. It was even better than the tape. And she made me cry, actually. And I knew that she had something you need to touch the people, the sincerity, the way you, you sing, the way you, you project, the way you give yourself away when you sing, and uh, she had it. When you think about the fact that she is the best-selling female artist of all time, sold over 200 million Are albums? you asking me? I told you I'm not good with math. I don't know. <laughs> 20 million albums. 20 million albums around, around the world. <laughs> we had the help of so many great people in this business. Don Mishner, David Foster, and his wife wrote a great song. And it made her known all over the world. And then James Horner, My Heart Will Go On, came to see us to propose that song. That was a huge hit. When you first heard it, were you like, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> She thought, I don't I didn't so. want to record it. Thank God I let him decide in the business. That's what I told you. I'm the boss at the house. But, yeah. He's the boss in Chicago. Thank wait, God he's wait, the boss you, in Wait, you didn't want to record it? No, the, the thing is... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sounds weird, huh? you, but you, I didn't. You, you have to understand. James Horner decided to play the piano and sing at the same time. It wasn't the best person. He was not selling the song very well. <laughs> And, and, uh, I was facing James back, so he didn't see me, and I was like this. <laughs> yeah, but... but uh, and, and, and he was like, like, one, wait. One thing, James Warner explained the situation to Celine, where it's going to play. She sang it once, and that was the take that everyone heard all over the world. One take. My heart was really? on. Well, I sang it once. But since then, <laughs> <laughs> a few times, but, right? Uh, yeah, and when she, she recorded it, 
I asked her, so what do you think? Do you like it now? And she says, yeah, I love it. <laughs> so this is very exciting. This is your first English-speaking album in, what, six years? Six years. What took you so long? <laughs> Well, it's true. It, it's been a while, but it was wonderful again, believe it or not, to uh, come back in the studio and um, to find songs again, to be passionate about new songs. So I can't wait for my fans to discover them. You're also doing some duets with a couple of artists, is that right? Correct. With, with Neo and Stevie Wonder, so it's pretty exciting. That is exciting. Yes. So, um, are you nervous about releasing an album after all these years? I'm not all? nervous. I'm, 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 I'm excited and I, I'm anticipating the moment. But nervous? No. I mean, we don't know, but we just want to please, if possible, I, I hope that people will, will love it. But right now I'm having the best time because we have wonderful songs that we're very proud of and we'll see. And I know that it, when it comes to who you're listening to these days, Adele is at the top of your list. Is oh, that right? You love Adele. Best. I love Adele because I love her, everything about her. She writes her songs, she sings amazingly, her lyrics, her passion, her rawness, her earthy tones, and I, I, I love her. You are going to play a song for us from the new album. It's the title track, right? And yeah. the name of the album is? Water in the Flame. And where did Water in the Flame come from? It's, uh, you know, the opposites. Is the name of the song? <laughs> well, I can't oh, wait yeah. to hear it. So will you play it for us? Of course. Okay, excellent. Here we go. Raspier, kind of a little, you know, right? A little rougher, Celine, a little bit. Very rough. No, but you know what I mean. Uh -huh. Your, your, no, your vocals know, yes. have Absolutely a different right. style. You know what? It's amazing because I'm, I'm, and I'm so happy because it's that relaxed instead of trying to make it so perfect, pure, perfect. Uh -huh. um, it's to kind of loosen up a little bit. I'm tired of this. You know, when I say I'm tired of this empty house, I need a drink to get me out and not a, a couple more till I forget your name. Ooh. You know, it's like, wow. Well, like it's beautiful. Still the same person. I think it sounds great. New sound, yeah. you may say. Well, congratulations. Thank and before you. we go, I know you wanted to introduce me to someone who you're very excited about, a singer here in Las Vegas who's also French, yes? Yes. She's Veronique. French. We're friends. She's a singer and she impersonate. Come on, oh, people. Bullshit. You. I'm very good, nice thank to, you. Nice to meet you, so. I, I just heard my name, so I said maybe that's my name. He just happened to be walking well, by. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Véronique is an amazing singer impersonator. And the fact that I really want to say singer before impersonator, because when if you say impersonating people, it can be putting clothes on and doing right. voices, even talking or singing or kind of sound like. Véronique is... It impersonates anyone. You must I mean, have an incredible singing voice all your own, though, well, right? You know, in my other life, I was a singer before that. You know, I was a singer, and I've been doing these impressions since 2008 because I was opening. Uh, I was the opening act for Celine, and that's where it all started for me. Well, good Hello, luck with that, thanks. and maybe you'll come to New York sometime and sing I for us. I would love that would to. Great. I would love to do that. That would be great. And it's when so you nice come to back you. to Vegas, yeah. you have to come yeah. and see I our will. show. I will. I've I'm, never listen, seen your take, show. You take my word, you're going to freak out. Really? <laughs> okay, good. Well, I want to come you. and see you, too. Well, so you make uh, the best show. of the trip. That's true. Mm -hmm. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you.